الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد we begin by praising Allah we praise him we seek his help and we ask for his forgiveness and we take refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequences of our evil actions whomsoever Allah guides no one can misguide but whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray no one can guide and i testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his servant and his messenger the sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the world and everything in it is cursed the world and everything in it is cursed cursed means that allah's blessing is removed from that thing so the world and everything in it is cursed and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentioned some exceptions he said except the scholar of the religion the student of knowledge the remembrance of allah and what helps you to do that the scholar the student of knowledge the dhikr of allah the remembrance of allah and whatever helps you to do that concerning dhikr allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he told us in the 13th surah in ayah 281 verily certainly in the remembrance of allah the hearts find rest the heart the mind the soul of the human being most certainly finds rest in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how could that not be when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said the meaning of which is remember me and i will remember you subhanallah if you remember Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will remember you And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that if you remember that Allah said if you remember me in my in your heart I will remember you in myself And if you gather together in a place and you mention me in front of a group of people I will remember you in a better gathering than that the dhikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something the term dhikr is something really quite comprehensive perhaps many of us imagine that a gathering of dhikr or people gathering remembering allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means as some people may imagine you know what if this is going to squeal just turn it off please i can't stand squealing speakers um my flow it's ruined my groove yeah al qurtubi he mentioned that the gatherings of dhikr are the places where the halal and the haram are discussed 
where the stories of the righteous people are mentioned. Free from innovation and falsehood. These are the gatherings of dhikr. So according to Qurtubi, the gatherings of dhikr or the gatherings where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered are indeed the gatherings of knowledge. All those gatherings where stories and narrations are mentioned that soften the heart and cause the people to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, the gatherings of dhikr are the places where the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned. And all of this connects with what we formerly mentioned concerning the world and everything in it is cursed except for the scholar and the student of knowledge and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in reality, seeking knowledge, being a student of knowledge is all in reality involving yourself in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also a Muslim should try to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of their life. Dhikr is something that we should be constantly preoccupied with. And we should not imagine that our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering Him is merely confined to our salah. No, the salah is there to refocus and that's natural in human beings is we tend to forget. We do forget. And as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned when Hanzala he came from listening to the khutbah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he realized that when he was listening to the khutbah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was talking about the paradise and the hellfire and the day of judgment you know he was feeling as if it was there but when he left and he went back to his family, he forgot all of that. So he was going around saying, Hanzal has become a munafiq. He was saying this. Abu Bakr says, and Abu Bakr meets him and says, Why are you saying that? And so he explained. You know, when we're with the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we are like this condition, and then we go back to our families, we are in a totally different way. We forget everything. It's as if we forget and Abu Bakr says, you know, Wallahi, I have the same problem. He said, and let's go and ask the Prophet. I just want to pause right there. Let's go and ask the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, for me, I don't know, I find that just that statement really profound. And I want to interject something here, and I hope I remember to get back to the end of the the narration. We all have problems in lives, brothers, in our life, brothers and sisters. I mean, that's the reality. Life is a test. الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا وهو لذيذ الغفور. Allah subhanahu wa taala created the death and the life to make known which of you are best in conduct, and He is the mighty and He is the forgiving. Life is a test. We are going to be tested. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you think that you will be left alone saying you believe without being tested like those who came before you were tested? And even the prophets and those who were with them said, When will the help of Allah come? When will the help of Allah come? They knew the help of Allah was going to come. They had no doubt. But the test was so severe. Things were so difficult. They reached such a stage. They, they're desperate. For the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When is it going to come? This help of Allah. And then Allah says, the meaning of which is, and then the, the, He says, the help, verily, the help of Allah is always near. Subhanallah. So yes, we will be tested. There will be hardship. There will be difficulties. And that is the reality of life. We are going to face those tests and trials and tribulations. But you know what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? He said, if you're faced with some test, with some trial, with some difficulty, he said, remember my death. 
Remember my death. 